Welcome to another Red Dead Redemption online guide. This one here is a little bit interesting from my perspective. I decided to test out something. I was having a look at the spawns of the various animals that are available in game and locations for them as I wanted to come up with some varied hunting areas. Now, there's a particular spot uh, west of Rhodes where a lot of people hunt near there, but very few people utilize this spot. I've noticed it's extremely free of griefing and going there and spending an hour there, which was the creation of this video, took about an hour I, I spent there, which is these islands out here. Now, I made $120 in purely satchel items. So disconnects, uh, griefers, it was not a concern. I couldn't lose anything I was doing. And I made $120 in an hour. You could probably make more. Um, I wasn't pushing particularly hard. Um, I was just kind of exploring it. I started in the Southern Island. The most money is probably to be made in the middle of the three, or the, the, the most northern, the largest island with the U-shaped uh, bay in the middle of it. Um, to get across there, I would suggest utilising a boat um, or a horse with, uh, you, you will need decent stamina, there's quite a strong current out here and when you get into the middle and closer to the island you'll see the horse starts to struggle a bit. This is a Turkomon which has 8 out of 10 stamina and a level 62 saddle and stirrups and he still doesn't struggle but um, on some less stamina driven horses I, I would be concerned or be using a stimulant to get across here on it. It is an easier swim for the horses up the further northern end of the islands. Um, you will find that the islands themselves, once you're over there, it, people won't bother you. Um, People may be curious as to why you're there, but they're not going to come across and uh, most people just can't be bothered with the time or the effort to get there for one person. Uh, aside from the fact that you're going to see them coming from quite a way away and uh, they're swimming across the lake, which means you're going to get free headshots on them the whole way across. So as far as being a grief free area, you're pretty safe here. Now, the reason I came over here was because when I was looking at the animal spawns, I saw huge numbers of animals that spawn over here, including some extremely rare or valuable animals. So, as an example, there's rabbits, muskrats, loons, iguanas, large smallmouth bass, both large and smallmouth bass, steelhead trout, there's owls, or a owl, uh, crabs, turkeys, gulls, herons, waxwings, sparrows. Um, the options here are endless almost. Um, toads. Um, there's a huge range of uh, items here that go straight into your satchel that you can stack to 10. Um, you can break down the smaller birds and get more value out of them as well um, instead of just keeping them in the satchel. Uh, Individually, they'll sell for about 60 cents. Uh, if you break them apart, you may get about a 90 to a dollar 20 out of them, depending on how many feathers you get. Um, the strangest creature here that is worth a lot of money, uh, considering what it is, is the muskrat. Now, the muskrat has scent glands that are worth, I think, 30 cents or 60 cents each. But on top of that, the muskrat pelt for a perfect muskrat pelt is $1.95. Now that's pretty much higher than almost any other small animal pelt that you can stack to 10. Um, the iguanas also spell, sell quite well for the perfect pelts. Um, and as you'll see throughout this video, it, there's a huge range of varied animals out here. There's berries, raspberries, um, various herbs. Um, many many items to pick up and as I said I spent maybe an hour out here and collected uh, 
close to $120, or actually over $120, as you'll see when I came out here, when I go back to the butcher, I have, I think, $170 or $171, and after selling everything from the hours trip out here, um, I end up walking away with $291 or $292, something like that. Um, but uh, you'll see in the, in the end, as I'll show the actual sale of the various items, um, as well, along with the uh, the value of what I what I gathered out here, I did come back again for about half an hour um, at the end of the after going back the first time, and made another sixty seventy dollars just in half an hour out here, um, just with some fish and a, a few animals. Uh, this footage here with these couple of iguanas and the, the rabbit and the owl that you will see shortly. Um, that came from the second trip, which is why you don't see me sell the owl feathers in, at the butcher. Um, the owl seems to spawn, I believe, on top of this wrecked boat in the little lagoon on the uh, larger island. Uh, he was sitting up there on top of the uh, masthead, and um, quite an easy shot. Perfect, perfect owl, three owl feathers. They're worth, uh, I think, a dollar fifty each. Um, and uh, yeah, I got uh, four dollars fifty for that. I did take the carcass back. It wasn't hugely valuable. It was only three dollars fifteen. Um, but uh, considering that you can stack ten owl feathers in your satchel, um, there's another fifteen dollars if you stack ten of those. They're as valuable as um, as loon feathers. Um, I would say only maybe the spoonbills. Potentially, maybe the condors and um, the the eagle feathers are, are, are valued higher, but the owls owls are very rare. So, um, being able to have a regular spawn point that you know that you can get a perfect owl and three feathers from is a nice way to just come and stock up on your ten owl feathers in your satchel. As I did mention with this video early on. Everything that I picked up, as you'll see, there is nothing on my horse. Absolutely everything that I collected, everything I sell, is in my satchel. It's a perfect method for avoiding griefers in terms of just... No one likes to die. No one likes being shot in the head. Um, no one likes to disconnect. But the reality of this playstyle is that you don't lose out on anything when you actually have these instances occur where someone decides to grief you or someone or, or Rockstar Services disconnects you in the middle of skinning a panther uh, as I've had happen in the last couple of days. The potential to lose your work over the last 20 minutes, an hour, two hours even when you're putting items on the back of your horse is quite high. Uh, all you have to do is fall off a cliff and die and you could spawn far enough away from your horse that he despawns and you'll lose everything that's on it. Um, in this method I find personally just gives me that freedom to not really care too much uh, with regards to griefing or losing items or disconnects. I can go out there, I can hunt, I can fish, I can collect what I need to collect, make good money while doing it and um, have the freedom to still be able to move around the map. If too many people turn up in an area I'm hunting, I can reload into a different lobby at a different location and come back and continue my hunting in an area that's now free of people. Um, I hope this helps. I hope that this area is something that you guys hadn't considered and, and gives you somewhere new to explore and, and maybe test out, see if it works for you. I definitely think I'll be going back there reasonably regularly. It's a nice area. There's there's very few people around. Uh, I may try and steal a boat next time, I think, and take a trip out there um, on a canoe or a rowboat and uh, make it a little bit of a, a less uh, arduous journey for my horse. You don't really need the horse out there. Uh, it is a way to get in and out from the islands uh, if your horse has enough stamina to get you across there. Thanks for watching. Uh, anyone who uses this and, and gets any benefit from it, congrats. Um, 